Well, good morning. So, uh, could the thousands of people that are waiting out in the narthex come on into the sanctuary? <laughs> For those of you streaming online and not in Oklahoma, we have a beautiful uh, uh, winter storm today. Uh, uh, I jokingly said each worshiper gets their completely own section in the sanctuary today. And Miles wanted me to be sure to announce that there will be donuts in between services today, but it will be him in his car out in the parking lot uh, doing, doing that. So uh, I just texted Margie and said, stay home. So, uh, but we are gonna have church today and then for those folks streaming uh, live as well. Uh, blessings to you today. It's our third week in Advent and our theme for the prepare ye to prepare our hearts to celebrate our Savior's birthday again is uh, praise, and we're going to look at Mary's song, the Magnificat. And I don't know about you, but uh, I don't know how Mary was not completely overwhelmed with uh, what the Spirit put on her her plate. And, and to be honest, uh, it's been a pretty overwhelming year for us. And you know, here we are, COVID and snowstorm uh, today for us. But may the Holy Spirit bless us today. Uh, Wednesday uh, for our Advent service on, at noon, uh, we will that will be the service that will have the school children singing and doing the songs and carols, lessons and carols, and uh, they're all their parts are going to be pre-recorded. But we, so we will have service here in the sanctuary, and their parts will be uh, our pre-recorded will be played on the screen for us. But that service will be at at noon on on Wednesday, and again. We have special invitations there that you can use to invite someone to tune in online or to come worship with us. And we are asking again uh, for uh, Christmas Eve to please make reservations for either the 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, or this year we've added an 11 o'clock. Uh, all three of those are candlelight services. The 11 o'clock service uh, will have communion, and then we'll also have a communion service at 10 o'clock on, on Christmas Day. So uh, pray a blessing on that. So I'm going to invite you to stand and we'll have our opening invocation. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In our Advent uh, responsive reading, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Sing with Moses and the people of Israel saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, she asked, Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And we'll stay standing as we join in hymn 375. Uh, come your hearts and voices raising.
invite you to kneel or you can be seated and we will just pause for a moment for our own personal time of confession and then we have a responsive uh, confession and the refrain is save us and help us when we take that moment of personal confession as well. join in these words of confession. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your truth and your beauty. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. For turning to what is dirty and ugly, beastly, and unsightly. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. For often of approving what, of what is sinful and dark. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For having no song to sing, no joy in our hearts, Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from the beauty of the gospel by temptations in the world around us, Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. All your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and his atoning sacrifice, shed blood, and third day victory over death, delivers divine peace to all who are penitent and contrite. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Please stand and join me in praying our prayer of the day. Dear Father, thank you for giving joy to Mary, Elizabeth, and her son, John, as they faced overwhelming challenges and difficulties. Give us the same Holy Spirit, so that we, with rejoicing hearts, may believe and be used to accomplish your holy will. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. We now hear our uh, first two readings. First, uh, from the, the Song of Moses. It's all about praise and worship and singing God's praises today. So, Mike, thank you for reading today. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verses 1 to 3. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellent excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Can we stand to hear the gospel and make our confession of faith? And uh, we will speak uh, the responses before and after the gospel reading that Myron shares with us. Our gospel reading for today is Luke 1, verses 39 to 45, page 856 in your pew Bible. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country, to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit from your womb. Why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. Together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. So when uh, this past week we learned about uh, Zachariah and when uh, Gabriel came to him and, and told him that he and his wife Elizabeth were going to have a child also, you know, and he, he doubted and, and this happened. He got, he was mute for the full term of the pregnancy until John was born and he said, yes, his name will be John. So uh, you can do this at home and any of you here today, so you can't make any noise but I want you to show me that you have joy. What would you do right now? Okay, I'm doing this. Oh yeah, this is sign language for uh, clapping. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what I thought about? And this is one, of, to be honest, this is one of the things I've really missed the most during this COVID time, is even when there are kids here in the sanctuary, you know, when we say it's children's message time, you all come forward, I say, let me oh, come run up there. Or sometimes I see this, at school, especially as the school kids are going out for recess, and they do this. <laughs> I don't know if that kept capturing on the camera there or not, but they skip, and skipping is another way to simply do what we sometimes call jump for joy. Have you heard that phrase, jump for joy? I bet it goes all the way back to this story from the Bible. Isn't it amazing? Here is John, he's in his mother's womb, and when Mary comes and uh, Elizabeth greets her and they greet one another, Elizabeth said, the baby in my womb just leapt for joy, leaping for joy in the presence of Jesus. And uh, I really want to encourage all of you not only to have joy in your hearts, especially when things are tough, things are difficult and we'll go more into that in, in the message today because not only does when we express our joy and, and Mary did it in a little bit I'm gonna invite the congregation to uh, read with us Mary's full song from the Magnificat uh, we're gonna read it so if y'all want to grab a Bible there it's page 856 and at home if you'll grab your Bible or an app and look up Luke chapter 1 uh, in a little bit, we're going to read the Magnificat, which starts in verse 46. So just get that ready and have that set aside. But sharing joy not only calms our hearts and our fears, but when we are joyful, even in the midst of very difficult times and sad times, we still have joy. Uh, that is a really great way to be a witness to others because they see 
the joy of Jesus in our hearts and in our in our minds. Now we can do that when we smile. We can do that uh, when we uh, clap our hands. Do you remember the last time you actually jumped for joy? I mean, literally jumped for joy. Uh, I think mine was 2016 when the Cubs finally won the World Series. <laughs> 2016. <laughs> I definitely didn't jump it for joy. Uh, that when, I, when that happened, you know, anybody can have a bad century, right? But uh, thinking about jumping for joy and, and when you're kind of feeling down in the dumps, and that can happen this time of year too, especially in the midst of, of COVID. And yesterday we had a funeral service for Marvin Kramer. And uh, one of the things Marvin's son Tim said when we were getting ready for the service, he said, well now, now we can uh, have joy because we know where, we know where dad is. So even in, in the sadness, losing someone, we can rejoice for them because they're with God in heaven. So let I pray that that joy carries you through these remaining days as we get ready to celebrate Jesus coming to be Emmanuel, God with us. May he fill our hearts with that peace and joy. So let's sing of that now as we join in Heart the Glad Sound, hymn 349. This amazing promise, uh, miraculous birth that was foretold to her by an angel of God. And then last week we talked about prayer and how Zachariah and Elizabeth themselves have been praying, not just for the Messiah to come, but they also have been praying for themselves to, to have a child. And uh, God also answered that prayer. Well, today it is it is praise. And today this the idea of praise, especially is going to be tied to the concept of peace and helping us in the face of the fears and the things that that might be overwhelming to us so i've noticed something about my my granddaughters uh, when we go someplace new or different uh, like 
if they are at our house or at uh, at uh, their own house and it's and they need to go to the bathroom, they can just go to the bathroom. <laughs> but if they're in a new place, it's Daddy, come with me. Daddy, come with me. And I was thinking about that here of saying, you know, when we go someplace new or someplace strange, I don't care if you're two years old or, or 92 years old, uh, when it's new and unknown in particular, that can be a little bit scary. We have some apprehension about that. And our prayer is probably the same thing. Maybe we don't say daddy, but you know, when Jesus prayed to the Father, he would use the word, the term, Abba, which is most is more tra closely translated, Daddy. It's a very familiar term for for one's father. Father, come with me. Daddy, come with me. Abba, come with me. And as we think about Mary in the story here, she could definitely say, "I've never been this way before." And I don't know about you, but when you're, even when you're driving your car, even in the days of GPS and all of that, sometimes you just kind of wonder, am I, do you feel like you're lost because it's totally unknown to you? And so I want you to think back in this year, especially 2020, with COVID and all of the extra challenges that it has brought, where you could say, I've never been this way before. This is new to me. For many people, there were new challenges related to work. And it might be you lost your job because of COVID and, and, and downsizing with you know, the economic challenges. Or certainly for most of us, we were doing our job in a new way. I've never worked remotely before. You know, that forced us to learn even how to, to do worship remotely. So we can say, I've never had that challenge before. Uh, perhaps some of you, you know, you're looking at retirement, and that's going to be a pretty big change, too. And you say, Father, come with me. I've never been this way before. Or, you know, all we have to do is look at our uh, prayer list here on the back of the bulletin, and even got a couple more uh, texts and emails this week of family members dealing with COVID. Uh, or Mark Henschel, you know, was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Uh, this week and you know in the face of that you just say father go with me I've never been down this road before facing a new health challenge or for some of us it's a relationship challenge you say well I've never dealt with this and that could be on a good you know maybe a positive health uh, change or uh, a negative health change you know getting married when you look at the stressor test uh, even though we say that's a good thing, it's way up there because it's a big change. Or when there's brokenness in relationships, we want to turn and we need to turn and say, basically with Mary, Father, come with me, come with me. Or even, I would say, spiritual challenges. And uh, again, you know, this is, I've never, I've never done ministry in the midst of a pandemic. It's been a hundred plus years since that, has hit something like this in the United States. So there are all kinds of spiritual challenges for us. And, you know, uh, I'm glad for technology and the ability we have to be able to stream even on, you know, bad weather days like this. But uh, to me, it's, it's different uh, worshiping. I know the very first time when I came in and, and we weren't even doing it live then, we were pre-recording and I was in here all by myself, you know, and leading worship, so to speak. That was a challenging thing spiritually because it's so much easier to worship and praise when their brothers and sisters in the Lord are here worshiping and praising. And, you know, so all of these other challenges may lead us to really kind of a crisis of faith. And again, we have to cry out to God, Father, come with me. Uh, I've never faced this kind of a spiritual challenge before. So let me go back through that list again. Think about how we could say all of these actually apply to Mary. I mean, when the, when Gabriel laid this news on her mind and on her heart, new work was now, she, I don't know, you know, we don't really know what she did, but almost everybody worked to help support the family. Now she was going to be a teenage mother. Um, 
she health issues, she was going to deal with the pregnancy, and then they had to travel, you know, and go to Bethlehem and all of that during the, the pregnancy. So she had a new health thing. She had definitely had a new relationship challenge because not only was she engaged, but she had to break the news to her family and to Joseph and that. Fortunately, the angel Gabriel also came to came to him to give him that a relationship challenge. And really, I think even a spiritual challenge to put her faith in the Lord in a whole new way. And I'm sure many, many days her prayer was, Father, come with me. I've never been this way before. So in the sermon notes here, you know, I said below that about when, when you and I say that, I've never been this way before, it, it's scary. And we can be tempted to do three things I, I thought of. Let me just give them to you and then kind of unpack them a little bit here. We're tempted, one, to do nothing, just to kind of freeze and stay where we're at. We're also tempted to, well, make excuses and not go down that road, right? And sometimes we're just basically completely overwhelmed. Uh, and the fear gets, gets to our hearts, to our minds. So how did Mary keep from doing these three things? What was it? That, how did God bless her? How did her faith carry her through? How did her prayers and her pondering, and yes, today especially, we're going to see her praise, her magnificat, my soul magnifies the Lord, help her down this as unyet uh, untrodden path. Well, let's look at that first one. The temptation to do nothing. And, you know, this is kind of a challenge for us in the midst of COVID because we're actually told to social distance and, but that doesn't mean we have to completely isolate ourselves. In fact, I was thinking about that. You know, the one Bible verse that says the devil, our adversary, is like a lion, you know, seeking to devour us. Well, you know, the way those hunting animals work is they like to single out one of the animals from the herd to isolate them and then pounce on them. And the devil wants to do that too. He wants to isolate us from our brothers and sisters in Christ. He definitely wants to isolate us from God. So the question is, how do we not do that? How do we stay connected? Well, one of the things Mary did is she went to spend some time with her family. You know, they, Elizabeth, her cousin. Um, and to, to have some encouragement and some help uh, there as, as they kind of both went through their, their pregnancies together. So I would encourage you to not isolate yourself, even though physically you may have to be distanced. You know, use the phone, use letters, use email, use chatting, whatever, to stay connected. And again, when you can't be here in person in worship, connect with the Lord and connect with your, your church family online. It's better than, than being completely disconnected. Another temptation we have is to make excuses for not going down the path that God is, is leading us on. And again, think about Mary. Mary could have easily said, you know, I can't do this. I'm too young. <laughs> or I think for sure her and Joseph probably said, I'm sure one of their excuses, hey, this wasn't our plan, God. <laughs> this was definitely not part of my plan, Mary would say. Joseph would say, it wasn't part of my plan, and it wasn't part of our plan. But God says... It's part of my plan, not just for you, Mary and Joseph, but for the whole world. And so I did a quick Google search of uh, best excuses, and, and there were all kinds of Reader Digest, Reader's Digest on their online thing. They had 60 actual excuses that have been used that they thought were really good. So for you students, I got a couple for you, and I picked two of my favorites. So one of my favorites was one student said, well, I did my homework, but I put it in the back of the pickup truck, and my mom went through the through the car wash, and it was destroyed. That's a pretty good excuse. <laughs> but this is this was my favorite of all time, and teachers take note of this. The student said, "I couldn't do my homework last night because I went to the rally for raising teacher salaries." <laughs> you think the teacher might give them a little break on that one? Yeah. Uh, but these were my two favorite excuses for being late for work. One of them was, by the way, this wasn't one of the two favorites, but uh, I, this could literally be used here in Oklahoma and even in Oklahoma City because I've heard this three times in my uh, uh, 18 years here in Oklahoma City. There was a cow on the road. 
<laughs> a cow got loose in the middle of the city, you know, whatever. But these were my two favorites. Uh, I'm late for work because my arm got stuck in the blood pressure machine at CVS. <laughs> and I don't know about you, I've, I've used those things and I'm always, the other thing really grips down on here, like what if I got stuck in this thing? So somebody, I don't know if it was real or not, but that's a pretty good excuse. But this is my all time favorite excuse for being late for work. My key flew out of the window as I was driving down the highway on the way to work. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty good excuse. But you know what? When it comes to God calling us and leading us down some paths that we've never been on before, we don't want to make excuses. And we definitely don't want to just stay where we are and do nothing. And we also don't want it to overwhelm us. And to be honest, you know, this, like I said, this year probably feels very overwhelming in a, in a lot of ways because it's been a, a, so many different kinds of challenges that have, you know, come with the health challenges and the economic challenges and again, even spiritual and worship challenges that, that go with it. And here's the thing about fear. Uh, sometimes we're kind of like those catatonic goats. You know, have you seen those goats in the history zone and they fall over? And uh, that can happen to us. Fear can paralyze us and we just kind of get frozen there and we don't want to, to do anything. And like I said, I mean, uh, for Mary and, and Joseph too, it, I think it would have been easy for fear to overcome them. Number one, just because having an angel <laughs> appear to you to give you God's plan. And so, you know, when the angel spoke to, to uh, Mary, when the angel spoke to Zechariah, when the angel spoke to uh, to Joseph, you know, the first words out of the angel's mouth were, fear not, or do not be afraid, uh, because this is God, this is God's plan, and this is God's presence. And I've heard this phrase before, and so I, I put it in my sermon notes there, and, and I think what Mary had to learn to do more than ever was to understand this truth. And it's kind of, it rhymes, it's kind of catchy, so I hope it kind of sticks in your heart and mind too. And the next time you're going to ask, kind of like Mary did, and kind of like Zachariah did, you know, Mary said, how can this be? Or uh, Zachariah said, you know, again, how's this going to happen if it's, we're well beyond the years of, of childbirth? And this is the phrase, what God originates, he orchestrates. God originates, he orchestrates. In other words, when God calls us to do something, he never will do that without also giving us what we need to be able to do it. The faith to be able to do it. The trust to be able to do it. Um, and so I think Mary and Joseph and Zachariah and Elizabeth, they really had to learn to trust how true this was. And for that to happen, what they needed is the same thing you and I need today on December 13th, 2020. We need God's presence with us. God's presence with us. And again, that's what we're getting ready to celebrate. God's presence with us. So yesterday uh, at the funeral, we said the Apostles' Creed and, and you know, Marvin, the casket was here. We had the, we have a, a pall that can go over the casket and, uh, and the Baptismal candle was lit and right behind me. I got out our baptism banner and put Marvin's name there. And I said, these are all reminders of what God has done for us in our baptism. And I, and I said, you know, we were baptized, Marvin was baptized, you and I are baptized in this name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You know, and whenever we say the creed, like we're going to do today, we confess our faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then we went out to the for the committal, you know, on the final prayer and blessing over Marvin's body and over any Christian body when we lay them to rest, is may God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who through his death and resurrection redeemed this body, and may God the Holy Spirit who in holy baptism made this body his temple keep these remains until the day of the resurrection of all flesh. And so I want you to think about how connected you are to the Trinity and how Father, Son, and Holy Spirit's presence with you can keep you from being overwhelmed 
by the unknown and, and when we all have to say I've never been down this road before. So first of all, kind of like when I hear the, my granddaughter say to our son Ryan, Daddy, come with me, having the presence of the Father with us gives us courage. Courage. So when you're feeling not so brave, cry out, Abba, Father, Father, be with me. Jesus' presence brings joy. <laughs> and we see that today. Even John in the womb leaps for joy in the presence of Jesus. And remember Jesus' promise, I will be with you always. Yes, even down this road you've never been before. So the Father's presence brings courage to our hearts and minds. Jesus' presence brings joy to our hearts and to our spirit, to our spirits. And the Holy Spirit's presence, to me, he brings several things. He brings guidance and direction, definitely. But he also brings peace. 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 And in the reading that uh, Mike read for us, uh, and this might be a good one for you to read back through this week, Philippians uh, there. Because uh, the part that you read, Mike said, and the peace of God will be with you. Now, the, the reading stopped then, but if you read a couple of verses farther down in Philippians 4 there, it says this, and I've always loved this too. It says, the peace of God be with you because the God of peace is with you. The peace of God comes from the God of peace. And now, here we are celebrating that God, the God of peace, has come to be with us in the flesh. And again, thinking about why did the angel have to come and tell Mary she was going to give birth, not just to any child, not to an ordinary human child, but to the Son of God, because Jesus is 100% fully, completely God. But he's also God who became fully and completely and we say that in the creed. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, right? In the late service today, we're going to use uh, the Nicene Creed. You know, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate. That means he came into the flesh, you know, by the Holy Spirit for us. And that's why we call Jesus Emmanuel. And remember what Emmanuel means? God is with us in the flesh, Jesus. Yeah. And we needed him to be both. He had to become one of us. He had to be a human so he could take my place and your place. He also had to be human so he could die in my place and your place. But we definitely needed him to be God, too, because we needed someone who would be completely without sin. That's who Jesus is and was. We also needed one who could rise and defeat death for us. So we're going to read Mary's song. So turn to that, grab that, and while you're while you're turning that, so this is going to, we're going to read uh, Luke one verses forty six to fifty five, the, the Magnificat. So I'll, I'll introduce it. I'll say it. Mary said, and then you can join with me. But I know while you're getting, that, I want to read this story with you. So this is an article uh, from the Voice of the Martyrs, which is. Uh, we have supported that with our mission offerings. Voice of the Martyrs tells stories about Christians all around the world who are being persecuted for their faith in Jesus, and many of them are being literally martyred, giving up their life for their faith. And the reason I want to read this, I'm going to read some more. I have a couple other stories I'm going to read next week. Is the theme next week is proclaim to tell this wonderful story. But I saw this one. And I wanted to share it this Sunday where we're focusing on praising God. Because, like I said, kind of during the children's message time, I said, you know, when we show the joy that we have in Jesus, it is really an important, crucial part of our witness to others. We want them to see the joy of Jesus in our hearts, in our lives, and definitely in our voices, in our songs of praise as well. So this is a story about a man named Ajit, and he's in India. And he was born as a Dalit. You know, in India they have the caste system, and basically if you're there, if you're in the lower caste system, you're uh, 
one of the names given to the cast that he's in is the Untouchables. You know, they're considered so low, it's like you just, you're not even barely worthy of being counted as a human. So, born as a Dalit, a member of India's lowest caste, Ajit had endured his share of beating simply for being an Untouchable. He first heard the gospel after accepting a pastor's repeated invitations to church. Now listen to this sentence. Where he was attracted to the singing and the prayers of the people. The singing and the prayers of the people. Later, when a street preacher again shared the gospel with him, Ajit placed his faith in Jesus Christ. Members of the Panchad, or local government, immediately told him to stop following Christ and to return to Hinduism. When he refused, his picture was published in the paper, along with that of the street evangelists, and they were told to stop converting people. Days later, a group of Hindus came to Ajit's house and threatened him. The leader held a gun to his head, saying, You need to stop what you are doing, or I will kill you. Though the police intervened, Ajit was expelled from his village. Today, Ajit continues to boldly live out his faith. He pastors a church of 200 people and helps start four additional churches. Wow. But that's what caught me, because I knew we were going to be talking about praise faces. It was the songs and the singing and prayers of the Christians that first drew him to Jesus. The joy of Jesus in your heart and your mind. So Mary sings her Magnificat. You know, it comes from the word magnify, my soul magnifies and glorifies God. So before we read this, let me just ask, how will you sing your own personal Magnificat to the Lord as you say, my soul magnifies the Lord? So let's read uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. Yes, we say it, and we sing it with Mary, my soul magnifies the Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God and the God of peace continue to keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, of course, again, we don't pass our offering plates here. Probably some of you are worshiping at home when you normally would be worshiping here today. And if you want to do a uh, an online gift, you can just go to our webpage, uh, www.messiahokc.org, and there's a little uh, click to give link there, and you can follow that to do that. So let's uh, stand, and uh, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together, and then we have uh, some special prayers for, for uh, Advent as well. So these are a couple of additional prayer requests. Um, if you didn't see the email that we sent out, uh, the Henschels got uh, very difficult news. Their son, Mark, uh, was given a terminal cancer diagnosis. Uh, but on the joy of Jesus uh, front, they, uh, his two brothers and uh, Mark's two children, they were all here uh, on Friday. But uh, one of the sons uh, tested positive for COVID, so they all had to go their own way again. So uh, I wanna lift them up. and. Other folks uh, diagnosed with uh, COVID are former members of uh, Jim and Mary Schultz. Uh, they live in Springfield, Illinois. They have uh, COVID. Andy Hinkle just sent a text that his sister Laura has been diagnosed with COVID as well. Uh, uh, Robin and Sandra Long asked for prayers for a friend of theirs, uh, Evan Duncan, 16 year old. He has stage four uh, cancer. Uh, Robin Long also has uh, some issues with his hands drawing up and, Deciding how best to do that. And then again, I want to lift up the Henschels and 
particularly Mark, uh, as uh, he goes through uh, his battle then here with cancer. And again, we have many folks that uh, are battling that disease as well. But let's pray to our Father as we have privilege uh, to do again today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And in these petitions at the end, we will all say together, and again, again I will say rejoice. Gracious Father, we long to live much less of a driven life and much more of a called life. We long to live with less fear and more freedom, less by frenzy and more by faith, with fewer obsessions and with much more adoration of you, the God of all peace. So we heed the words of St. Paul, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Gracious Father, forgive the times when you call us forward and we do nothing and make excuses. Instead, enable us to be like Mary as we go forward, always forward, forever forward, marching to the words, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Gracious Father, for many of us, what hinders most is fear. Fear of not being enough and having enough. The fear of losing faith and losing control. The fear of missing the mark and missing out. Only your presence with us in Jesus our Lord can keep us from falling into the pit of worry and anxiety. That's why we decide to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Gracious Father, drive out everything in our lives that holds us back from full-hearted and all-out devotion to you. Your Son lived a perfect life, a life of perfect obedience for us, as the second Adam, fulfilling everything you require of us. Christ's resurrection from the dead on the third day is the first fruits, and guarantee that one day we will be as lovely as you and as loving as you. What a glorious day that will be. That is why we say, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, Rejoice. And loving Father, we <clears throat> pause now to lift up uh, those who are on our hearts and minds today. For those who are going down the new road of spending this Christmas without a loved one who has died this year, may you comfort Dorothy and the Kramer family and continue those prayers for Eric and the Wasselaks, uh, for Kay Cooper and the family of Gladys Williams, uh, for Pastor David and Mary Kreppel mourning the death of his mother, Tester. We also come to you and pray for many uh, who are battling uh, COVID. Be with uh, Jim and Mary Schultz. Be with Andy's sister, Laura. Uh, we also pray, Heavenly Father, for Nathan and Betty and, and others we know who have been diagnosed with COVID. Be with, again, our frontline workers. I pray for your blessing upon uh, Margie and her co-worker, too, as uh, she will be one of those giving the vaccine to her co-workers at Mercy. Be again, bless uh, them with safety, and we pray that these vaccines can help uh, curb and uh, hopefully eliminate this pandemic. Uh, thank you for successful uh, surgery for Ron and the removal of that tumor in his intestines. Uh, be with uh, Rob Long, too, as uh, he deals with his health issues related to his hand and lived up there my young friend Evan and his battle with cancer as well. And for Mark Henschel, as he had that diagnosis as well. And we continue those prayers for Ed, Greta Hawley and Kyle Swisher, for Ruth Lyons, for Lisa Beckman, uh, for Jeannie Heitman's sister uh, as well. And so we entrust them all to your loving hands, gracious Father. We place ourselves these prayers and those we love before your throne of grace, trusting in the power and the priceless name of Jesus. Amen. In our Advent benediction, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the God, peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let me close with, lift up your head, ye mighty gates, him. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 